Hi, and welcome back to Master Slider free version video tutorial. In the previous video, I demonstrated how to create a slider. And as you can see, my slider here is a quite simple one. So in this video, I'm going to make it a little bit more applicable by making a few alterations and changes in the slider settings. To do so, I click on the slider that I've just made from the list of my sliders and I choose the slider settings tab. In the general settings tab, I could make changes to the title and dimensions of the slider. For instance, I can change the height from 500 pixels to 400 pixels. If your pictures are not the same size and are not homogeneous, you could check this option that automatically crops and resizes the slider images based on the size that you have chosen. But because my photos are adjusted and have the same size, I won't use this option. In this section, you could choose your slider to be at full width or at boxed layout. And regarding to the settings that you have on your WordPress pages, you could choose between the two types. If you don't like to crop the pictures and you have images in various heights, in this section, you can simply use Auto Height option. By enabling this option, the height of slider will automatically change based on the height upcoming slides. And as I just said, my pictures have the same height. So again, I won't need to check this option. And I just leave it to the default settings. In the slider transition section, I can change the features of my transition. I have two options for my transitions. One is normal and the other one is fade. Here I could change the direction of the transition from horizontal to vertical and vice versa. And here I could change the speed of transition in my slider. So I change it here from 20 to 35 for my slider to be a little bit more faster at the transitions. Please note that this option indicates the speed of transition, not duration. Therefore, increasing this factor leads to an increase in transition speed. And slide space is the space between the images that appear in the slider. Usually, on the default settings, we just set that amount to zero. Well, I click on preview to check what changes have been made to my slider. As you can see, the height of my slider has decreased by 100 pixels and the speed of my transition in my slider has increased. Then, I save the changes that I have made. Next, we have the navigation settings. In the navigation section, I have many different options. By checking this section, autoplay, I change my slider from static mode to a more dynamic autoplay or slideshow mode, which plays automatically as soon as the slider is loaded. By checking the loop section, you give your slider a loop. And by that, it means that when your slider reaches the last picture, it just goes back and shows the first picture on the row. So by checking that option, you create a loop in your slider. By checking this section, your slider will pause at the end of the slides. And by checking this option, when you have your mouse cursor on the slider, it pauses the transition. And by leaving it, it resumes the transition. By activating the random order, you could have your pictures appear randomly. And in this section, you could choose which picture shows up first in your slider. And I just leave it to its default settings to be number one. In this section, you have the settings for swipe navigation methods. When touch swipe navigation is enabled, you could have touch navigation, you could swipe your slider on a variety of touch devices such as tablets, smartphones, and etc. When you have this mouse swipe navigation option available, you could swipe your slider using your mouse on a PC, desktop, or laptop computer, and have the same touch swipe experience on touch devices. When you check this section, the function of your mouse cursor changes to grab mode when you navigate through the slider using mouse swipe. 
By checking this section, you could use your mouse wheel to swipe through your slides. And next, we get to Smart Preloading section, which is one of the most noticeable features of Master Slider. Since it aims to load images on demand, this option helps you make your page as light as possible. In other words, here you can specify how images will be loaded on the slider. By using this feature, you can reduce the size of your pages and significantly raise your page rank in search results. In this section, we have three methods of preloading. In the first setting, only the slides that are nearby each other will be loaded, and other images stay in the load queue. In the second setting, the slides will be loaded in a sequence and on demand in a linear order. And in the third setting, all of the images will be loaded and then your slider will be initiated. Next, in the appearance section, as it sounds, you could change how your slider looks like. If you have set the controllers that I'm going to show you in the next video, in this section you could change their skin, that here I just leave it to its default setting. You could choose a background image and also a background color and I just leave it blank because I don't want background image or a background color here. In this section, you could define a custom CSS class name for the slider, which is suitable for advanced styling purposes. And here, you could create a custom CSS style for your slider, and you're able to address the current slider by using the custom class name that we specified in class field section earlier. Okay then, I just click on preview to get a hint of how my slider looks like. Well, as you can see, my slider is playing automatically and after showing the final slide, it goes back to the first one because I've just enabled the loop function. And I can use my mouse to swipe through the slides. And you could also make many other changes in this section regarding your needs. Finally, I save my slider and that's it. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned.